Well, this looks like it's gonna be one of the longer clips. I guess I'd better brace myself for a lot of talking as I try to keep a decent amount of commentary fill in this one. It'd probably be easier if I felt in any way interested in the planet we're working on, or the objective we've been given. But really, I just want to get this over with and see if the next big objective in the game is going to be something that draws me back into the experience. Same batch of bots on the same bridge, and it's just as uninspiring to take them. I guess the truck ship there wanted to attack those robots as well. Not that the plasma beam is an especially fun weapon to use when the enemy gets into a nice convenient line. It kinda makes me wish that the game gave us a gun that could do damage to multiple enemies, either by piercing through them or having a large area of effects, like a conventional explosive. Unfortunately, the only weapon of Samus's that I can think of that isn't a precision weapon but then of some kind is, uh, the power bomb? The missiles and super missiles certainly don't have the kind of radius I would attribute to explosives in other first person shooters. And regular bombs are just not really meant to be used in casual random fights. Hell, the only enemies I've killed using bombs are either bosses where part of their gimmick involves getting injured by bombs, or hostiles that happen to be in a tunnel network we were rolling our way through. It's actually kind of funny to me to start trying to think of Samus needing some kind of area effect, multiple hostile hitting kind of weapon. In most games, I tend to go for a mix of rapid fire and precision weapons, with only the very circumstantial switch to something like a shotgun when it is especially good. Like in uh, Combat Evolved in the First Crisis, with plenty of close range encounters to keep it exercised, and not a whole lot of grenade throwing. Eh, is it a good or bad thing that this game is making me wish we had uh, some kind of option for cluster together enemies when that's not usually my thing? Huh, so that dropship blasted the platform we could use to get from one side to the other then destroyed the gears that forced us to need that platform in the first place. I'm pretty sure he ended up helping us more than he ended up hurting us there. Now excuse me for wondering about an in-universe explanation for why that dropship's guns did so much damage to the environment when one, when none of the others that have shot at us have made so much as a speck of dust kick up when they hit the ground around us. Hell, I'm not even sure what the gameplay reason for that happening was. We already had a way to go from one side to the other. That just removed one of the steps and gave us a missile upgrade on top of it. Do I just have an inaccurate idea of which upgrades we gained down as gimmies? Because it feels like this game has been giving us frickin' gifts far more often than any other Metroid game. Hell, am I just way too used to them uh, giving us all too precise puzzles in order to reach a good number of upgrades? Because I'm not entirely sure it's even right for me to complain about the game making that sort of thing easier, when part of me kind of wants to get the game over with so I can move on to the next on my list. Okay, so we've got something else to repair, along with a bunch of small bug-like robots crawling out like roaches for some reason. Those little critters, uh, don't seem to be hostile. Not that we had a chance to scan them there, maybe we'll see them again later and be able to scan them. This isn't even an actual welding job, it's just magically creating a brand new wire and not breaking anything when we don't uh, hit the right section of the damaged surface. Okay, what did we just turn on? Does 
does this mean we're supposed to drop the thing we only just picked up with our ship? The effect of that bit of uh, reactivated machinery certainly wasn't all that obvious. So, we're supposed to activate the bomb slot again. Still feels like padding, but at least it's not as bad as the bit where we had to turn back so a door would lock in front of us to let the actual way forward open up. I am not gonna forgive Brio for that. Okay, so now we've got a hologram at the top of this thing. Not really giving me the sense that we're getting closer to forming the bomb that we need to blow the seed up, but at least it's a visible effect. Maybe I'm just letting my impatience at the moment take away from my own accomplishments. At least we have a higher way up now, that's certainly something. And we certainly won't need the spider ball to get to this bomb slot. And of course, there are other bomb slots that absolutely require the spider ball, so we'd have to remember to come back here later on. I suppose this looks interesting. If only I knew just what was going on. Okay, so this room lets us gain some maps, which aren't quite as important in this game since the level design isn't something that makes us look at the map all that often anyway. It's not like it revealed all that much in uh, here specifically, and we've explored most of this region of this planet anyway. Maybe the other bomb slots are going to give us something more uh, worthwhile, but I'm pretty sure this room is only going to give us maps, and it's very likely it won't tell us much about any ground we haven't already explored this far in without the spider ball to reach the higher bomb slots. Eh, uh, still, may as well go through all the ones we can reach at this point. It's not like we lose anything by doing so. Okay, so we're not, uh, put into the map screen if the map we gain here isn't actually on Elysia. I suppose I appreciate that lack of breaking the flow. Not that we've got all that much flow of gameplay at the moment, we're just going from that one bond slot to the next. At least until we finish going to all the reachable bond slots in this place, then we'll move on to the next room. Okay, can't go to the left anymore. I suppose we're done not long after I said we're here until we're done. I wouldn't say that vital is the right word for it, considering the level design of this game overall. Okay, we've got a nearby upgrade, probably not a major one. I could probably take those drones down just as fast with the plasma beam, 
it's not strictly necessary to grapple them, but to be fair, this game does give uh, the grapple beam a lot more work to do than any other Metroid. And sometimes the animation doesn't even wait for the arm to uh, wrench back before it does its effect. Well, that missile upgrade is certainly pretty high up, and I somehow doubt that the screw attack is going to be enough to get us over there from over here. Is it even accurate to call it a screw attack if we have never used it as an attack in the 3D part of the franchise? So, the Chozo decided to put trees inside of their floating robot city for some reason. Possibly because we needed some reminder that they are indeed space elves. As if the sheer amount of bullshit they've managed to do before they ceased to exist in this galaxy wasn't a big enough hint. Anyway, we may as well use this save point and we've got enough leeway to throw in more footage without uh, worrying about breaking the half hour mark. Though I've got to admit, part of me was tempted to let the clip end this soon just for the sake of saving me from having to do around 25 minutes worth of commentary. I'm possibly missing something obvious as a way to get to that upgrade. Ah well, we're close to a nice door, so let's break it and see what's on the other side. And we're on the other side of that broken elevator. That's a good sign. Wait. So the Chozo made robots willingly let themselves be controlled by the Aurora unit? I'm sorry, but that just seems iffy based on what we've seen. For one thing, that kind of undermines the lore that implies the machines have their own autonomy. After all, aren't they the ones writing this lore entry? Am I just not looking at things in the right uh, angle? And for another, once the Aurora on the planet was uncorrupted and reconnected to the network, shouldn't the robots have stopped being hostile to us if that was the case? Is it even worth it for me to feel annoyed by that bit of lore when this game has thrown a lot of lore at us that just doesn't make me give a damn? Right, so we've got a big pirate as a boss in here. I'm sorry, but we beat a Berserker Lord all the way back at the start of the game. Is there anything about this one that's supposed to make it more dangerous than the first one since we fought for that one on the Olympus when we had a lot less health, had a weaker beam, and there was a hilariously convenient fighter craft for the big guy to drop on top of? Yeah, there's nothing about this guy that's interesting to fight. We're just gonna go through the opening boss fight again when we're stronger with a slightly different battle zone. I'm not saying the Berserker Lord is a bad boss design. It just doesn't feel interesting enough that we should fight against it more than once. And I'm fairly certain this is the third Berserker Lord we've seen in this game so far. Though maybe it's just a second. up and start actually going through your health bar. You are nothing special, sir. You are a repeated Star Boss that shouldn't be here 21 clips in. Your growls mean nothing to me. You're kind of a joke when it comes to larger foes I've had to deal with help. You aren't even the biggest foe we've seen on this planet, much less in the game. I'm just holding in far too many yards while dealing with this guy this far in. And that does. 
that's it. We're done with this Berserker Lord. Again, nothing special considering what else we've dealt with in this game so far. If nothing else, this kind of makes me kind of appreciate the core boss fight more since he at least had something more going for his fight than what we see against these big guys. Now that he's gone, time to unlock whatever it is we're grabbing from here, then pick it up with our ship. We'll figure out what to do with it after that. Right, locks have been removed, and we've got something else to interact with. Something with one of the annoying to emulate twist the controller around puzzles. Again, if there's anything I'm looking forward to when the Metroid Prime Met 3 Remaster comes out, is for me to be able to do the various tasks that require some finesse without any real trouble once again. This game is certainly beatable with an emulator, but it's annoying as hell to pull off some all-too-common tasks, and good god, I get the feeling that trying to play through the Wii's Punch-Out or Red Seal would be its own pain in the ass to get my computer to properly emulate. I should probably try getting those running instead of Metroid Other M, since I actually did enjoy them. But I'm still not looking forward to trying to get those controls working. Eh. Okay, no clue why that retracted into the wall. So. We're still going through unexplored territory. That's not gonna last too long, but I certainly appreciate it for uh, the moment. And it's very likely to lead us to our next major objective point. I think that sums up quite a bit of the tech parts we've seen in this game so far. Anyway, it looks like we're not going to be able to break through that just yet. So, we need to have good timing to jump over there. Well, the timing for that wasn't too bad, but I doubt that's the only time we'll have to have good timing. Right. More things to repair, so we may as well, even if I don't know what uh, we're repairing just yet. It's not like this game will have any kind of traps for players foolish enough to repair this or that particular piece of paneling. I don't think Nintendo is quite that sadistic, and certainly not with this franchise. The closest thing to that kind of trap I can think of is uh, the time a Chozo statue uh, that looks like it might give us an upgrade turned out to be a boss. But that's certainly nowhere near common enough for me to feel especially cautious of interaction with things in this franchise. Nothing like various item boxes turning out to be a mimic in RPGs or something. So we've got a repaired elevator. Again, I hope that leads to something important. But it's not like it's all that easy to give a damn at this point of the game. Well, this is familiar ground, so it looks like there's some spots we could unlock nearby. I just need to find the doors we haven't actually opened yet. Not much point in looking at the map for hints. Again, in all the games, the map doesn't actually tell us what barriers we have to deal with if it isn't an outright door. It's not even saying where the elevators are in here. And we've got 
got more locks to have to deal with. Hell, would we even be able to pick this thing up while also carrying the other thing that your ship uh, is currently carrying at the moment? I suppose we'll know as soon as we actually unlock this thing. to get up there when the map isn't detailed enough to tell us. Bit of an annoying way to slow things down, but then it's not like things have been hopping on in this stage of the game. We're going through things at a pretty sedate pace and not especially drawn in by it. And it's a rather big difference from the attempt at an action-oriented start for the game. I know we're gonna get another big action sequence or two before we're done, but still, really not sure what the hell is with the pacing around here. It's not quite dragged out like the key hunts in the previous two Metroid Primes, but this still isn't an exactly especially interesting clip despite the boss fight. Anyway, it looks like I might have to go back down the elevator if I want to move on. attack certainly isn't going to help us here, but again, at least this is unexplored territory, so there's some novelty at the moment. I wouldn't quite say that I'm running out of steam for the game at this point, but 21 clips into an LP does have a way of starting to mess with you, unless you are absolutely sucked into the experience. There are going to be moments where you kind of check out for a while, even if you enjoy the game as a whole. The longer the overall experience, the more likely that is to happen. And while the Metroid Prime games aren't among the longest games I've ever LP'd, uh, they're certainly significantly longer than the 2D Metroid games. So it's a lot easier to end up feeling fatigued as you keep working on them. And we've caught more dropships. We've certainly been shooting them down pretty frequently since we returned to Elysia. And it's not doing the pirates any favors in terms of credibility that we're taking down their ships this fast. Granted, they don't need credibility the same way the Covenant from Halo do. Still, they're trying to be more of a military force in this game than any of the other Metroids. And unfortunately, they just can't measure up to that on a fundamental level. This just isn't the kind of genre where they can pull off being a military. As much fun as Metroid can be, the three-dimensional section of the franchise isn't what I would really call action-oriented. It's definitely hard to feel all that immersed in things when we drop down into a bottomless abyss a few times in a row with minimal consequences. Metroid just isn't fundamentally meant for bottomless pits, so of course, they just decided to make it this planet's main gimmick. Eh, just another reason I can't find it in me to give a damn about Elysia in this game. Ah well, we're getting close to the next stopping point, so it's not like we're gonna have to deal with it for this much uh, longer, at least in this clip. I'm definitely looking forward to leaving this planet again, but it's not like I know how many more clips we're gonna be here. Oh dear. There's only one reason someone would turn to dust like that. Metroids are around and they're draining people dry. Still, we've got a good amount of experience in killing Metroids and we've got nice weapon. I'm not terribly worried. I'm just confused why the pirate sent Metroids to Elysia and not to Brio. And of course, I'm used that they still haven't figured out a way to properly tame these things, despite that being the main reason they keep doing crap in this franchise. Seriously, what is even the point of trying to use them as some kind of biological super weapon if they keep killing your own guys left and right? <laughs> 